namaste uh, who are aspiring spiritually and who can't decide or are confused whether sanyas ritualistic uh, renunciation is necessary in this path for them i would like to say uh, intellectually understanding that something is good for you isn't enough isn't it you have to be convinced so much so that you choose what is right for you and are not tempted by the pleasures of the world so even if you intellectually understand that renouncing is better and becoming a sanyasi leaving home or career is better for you it that shouldn't be enough uh, for you to leave home intuitively you must feel that this is right not intellectually that is what i mean otherwise what happens is often the purpose that we have for our lives contradicts what we are deciding or what we are thinking at the moment intuitively you must feel because our life purpose is fulfilled only if we follow our intuition nothing is bad or you know wrong or a lower path kind of that in the uh, from a higher perspective it doesn't matter which path you choose to evolve even if you choose to marry uh, lead a married life even if you like doesn't matter if you choose a life of a re- renunciate uh, whether you choose living in an ashram or whether you choose to live in solitude whether you choose to ritualistically take up monasticism or whether you choose to just you know live like me like without having taken taking sanyas it should depend on you because everybody the path of evolution for everybody is different and what you feel intuitively that is the right path for you because your life purpose will only be fulfilled if you follow your own intuition so even if you feel like getting married that's okay like maybe those experience that you go through that will help you evolve more isn't it so and maybe even your life companion maybe your you know more cooperative in your spiritual aspirations or even if there is opposition even that opposition is sometimes very helpful for evolution those experiences so like don't hear anybody else's advice don't ask here and there what is right for you you must know yourself what is right for you and when people ask me why don't i wear ochre clothes and why don't i why haven't i taken up sanyasa it was that at first i was i had this too much uh, you know strong uh, devotion in me and uh, i wasn't yet ready for that non dualistic aspect which in our ashram sanyas is given in accordance to vedanta and that is the non dual aspect uh, and the indian people would already know that in our culture sanyas is given in many ways like if you are vaishnava krishna devotee of krishna sanyas is given in a certain way vows are different according to shakta or shaiva the vows are different the rules are different according to uh, like vedanta it's it's based upon the non dual aspect and the vows are different uh, but whichever it be at that time i wasn't ready for the non dual aspect so i didn't take sanyas and later on when even now i have evolved into the non dual aspect i still don't feel the need because that is my own personal choice that i already said before that it should be your own personal decision and choice and uh, intuitively i feel that it's not for me it's like it's not needed because uh, the rules and regulations that are there the vows that are taken uh, when you take up ritualistic monasticism uh, there are vows so even that has a touch of you know uh, the human experience like what, what kind of hair you keep what kind of dress you should wear what kind of uh, diet you should follow and i didn't want to be bound by any regula- regulations rules and regulations so uh, i didn't uh, take up sanyas even uh, like later on even now and uh, what i would like to remind what thakur says that when a sapling is small a tree sapling is small it needs a very strong fence around it to be protected so that it it's uh, not harmed by other you know grazing animals like cows or goats but when it grows into a tree then no fence is needed because it has already grown grown up uh, so 
in the spiritual path when you are in the beginning stages not only for one lifetime maybe it might be the truth for many lifetimes when you are in the beginning stages of spiritual evolution you need a very strong fence and that is provided by these ashrams or gurus and you know a very protective environment where uh, everything is so conducive to spiritual evolution that it's your decision like what do you feel is conducive to you or what you feel is intuitively uh, what is right for you so according to that you have to take your decisions so the ashrams provide you a very nice you know protective environment for your spiritual growth and if you feel that you are strong enough to take care of yourself and do it yourself then whether it be uh, living in society doing a job living alone whether it be married life or whether it be like me living in solitude and you don't need any other you know protective shell around you then it's okay that's fine but the thing is you shouldn't compare somebody with somebody else you shouldn't compare me with others or others with me you know because everybody's path is different each individual is evolving in their own way and it's nothing that this is higher or this is lower it's okay like who knows the you know who knows what is the life purpose of that particular soul so even in ashrams you know you will find very high souls whose life purpose might have been just to be born for the sake of that institution for the well being of that institution to you know energize or activate more that particular institution spiritual institu institution so it's not always that one is not a very high soul and that is why one is living in the ashram no no it's not that often you know many souls come for the sake of that institution that spiritual institution to you know work through that from that for the well being of themselves and for society so that is that is good living anywhere doing anything everything is good it's it's just that you should feel intuitively that it's right for you that's all namaste i hope i could convey my message and uh, as an after note i would like to add that even girls who feel like becoming a renunciate and or they feel that the options are very lesser for them uh, compared to men like uh, it's only like either you join an ashram or you live in society i would like to say that well if you want uh, imagine what kind of life you want write down your priorities what exactly is your uh, imagination of a perfect life where the place you want to live in the what kind of work you want to do if you want to do any how do you imagine your final situation to be that not that how the money will flow to you but just that how you think uh, you want to live like do you want to live in comfort or do you want to live like a hermit and you know there's always law of attraction so whatever your imagination is remember that nothing is impossible and the divine will arrange all things for you in that same way so write down your priorities your priorities must be set that what are your priorities yes is spiritual evolution a priority and uh, what other things are your priorities other than spiritual evolution and don't think that having other priorities is again bad or something it's okay like if you are a girl naturally security will be a priority for you naturally a uh, a very protected environment will be helpful for you so think exactly what kind of life you want and trust the divine that the divine can arrange it all for you whether like uh, whether living in a society having a career and yet you know following your spiritual path or whether living in solitude or whether living in an ashram or you know whatever you imagine you know traveling around and spiritually evolving and no financial problems or you know living in your dream place whether it be narmada or himalayas or wherever and you know evolving spiritually reading books having like 
a peaceful life amidst nature and with no financial problem like whatever is you imagine is the perfect life for you write it down write it down set your priorities and keep it in your mind and just trust that the divine is there to arrange everything in accordance because if you think that is your dream life intuitively that means it is made for you and you are supposed to lead that kind of a life so don't think that anything is impossible namaste